Hello everyone, I'm Anime Freak and welcome to the video. Today I am going to be doing a top 10 video and today's video is going to be about my top 10 favourite anime series of all time. Now, I just want you guys to know that just because my top 10 favourite anime on this list is on here doesn't mean that your favourite anime is inferior to mine. This is all opinion based and if your favourite anime series isn't on this list then give your list in the comment sections below. Some of the anime on this list might be a bit obvious but when you see why I've put the anime on this list you'll see why it's one of my favourites or they are my favourites. Again, this is all opinion based so please don't go ape shit when you don't see your favourite anime series on this list. This is just my my list not yours so with all that said let's get to watching and one more thing i might be given spoilers in this list so you have been warned number 10 the key three okay okay i know some of you are going to say you're going to say wait a second anime freak you have to only pick one not just a three and to be honest yes i, I know what you guys are trying to say yes i understand that i can't just pick all three of them because they're all different series but here's the thing even even though that these are completely uh, separate uh, series they were also made by the same company each one of them have their, has their own unique story and all three of them has made me cry like a little bitch and let me tell you something the music is awesome the animations are awesome all three of them was an absolute tearjerker and i absolutely loved them but if you guys want me to choose one well Let's start off with Air. Even though I do love this series, and, I'm re and I really, really mean that, it does have its problems. Even though it has its sad moments, the music's beautiful, the animation's beautiful, the one thing that really bothered me was the story. Now, most of the story is fine, but in the middle of the series, something really, really stupid happens. And for that reason, the series Air can be taken out. And now we have a tie between Canon and Clan Ed. Now, let me tell you guys something. I really, really love these two, and I mean really, really love these two. I mean, Air was, was good, but it had one or two things unresolved, and in the middle of it, something stupid really, really happened. But these two, Canon and Clan Ed, are perfect. Well, perfect to me anyways. But to break this tie, I'm going to have to go with Clan Head of being my favourite of the three. Simply because it's longer, the animation is absolutely beautiful and clear, the characters are memorable. And before any of you go nuts, I just want to make one thing perfectly clear. There are scenes in the other two, Air and Canon, that made me cry harder than what Clan Ed gave me. But, but, there's this one scene in Clan Ed that no matter how many times I see it, no matter how many times I try not to cry, there's this one scene in the series that just makes me cry every single time. Now, in Air and Canon, I did cry a lot and I mean you know even more than I did in Clan Ed but with Erin Canon there's just a really really deep sadness for the characters and that's all well and good but in Clan Ed there's this scene where Tomoya texts his daughter Yushio to go and see his father after so many years of not talking Tomoya realizes how much his father sacrificed to raise him You've got to watch the old series to understand where I'm coming from with this. But with this scene, I think this actually its all of us. We don't realise how much our parents sacrificed for us just to be happy. But that's not the only reason I like Clan Ed. Like I said, it's longer, beautiful animation, the characters are memorable, it's a real tearjerker. It's got plenty of other tearjerkers in it. But like I said, even though I do love Clan Ed, I also love Air and Canon. All three of these are very special to me. But if you had to twist my arm and say, hey, which one do you like? Which one do you like? You, you can only pick one. Then it would definitely be Clan Ed. Definitely 100% Clan Ed. And to be honest, I don't think there's any other anime out there that has made me cry like these three have. So, on to number nine. Number nine. Bokano. Okay, I'm just going to say this. Bakano is an awesome, awesome show. And I really, really mean that. This series has a mixture of mafia, immortals, bloody violence, loads of character stories going on at the same time, good backstories, fantastic characters. And my favourite part of the series is when everybody is on a train called the Flying Pussyfoot. Yeah, very gay name, but what can you do? And loads of crazy stuff is going on on this one train. And let me tell you something, it's freaking awesome. There are loads of characters on this one train and they either come across each other, they go past each other 
and the mystery on this train, it's absolutely amazing. There's even a few surprises in this series that'll make you go say, what? And another good thing about this series is that it's not a traditional anime where everybody goes to school and there's forced fan service in your face. None of those tropes that we see over and over again. And you know what? I think this is actually a very original series. And I highly, highly recommend it if you haven't seen it already. Please go and check it out. But there is one problem I do have with this series. And that is, well, it's not so much the series, but the fact that there isn't a second season of Bokano. And loads of people have been praising this series. Even Giga UK loves this series. I've seen this series five times already. And I really wanted to know what was going to happen to all these other characters. I hear it didn't do so well in Japan. That's why we didn't get a second season. My guess is that High School Girls in Skirts was more profitable. Oh well, I guess we could always read the novels. Again, if you guys haven't seen this series, I highly recommend you go and watch it. It's an awesome, awesome series. So, let's move on. Number 8. Romeo and Juliet and The Count of Monte Cristo. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, wait a sec, Anime Freak, you've already done this with the key three. You chose three in one slot. Well, no, not exactly. I did say that Clan Ed is my favourite amongst the key three, but Romeo and Juliet and the Count of Monte Cristo is my tiebreaker. Some lists do this, and I'm doing it. So here we go. These two are very similar, and when I mean similar, I mean they're both retellings of classics. Romeo and Juliet is a retelling of, well, Romeo and Juliet. And the same with The Count of Monte Cristo. And to be honest, I'm actually a sucker for these sort of anime. Let's start off with The Count of Monte Cristo. And the first and foremost thing we should talk about is the animation. Oh my gosh, is the animation so freaking awesome in this. It has its own unique style. Well, I wouldn't say it's animated. It's more like a mixture of animation, CGI, and very weirdly, wallpaper-ish. And what I mean by that is, it, it's like their clothes are made out of the wallpaper. Their clothes maintain the shape and the angle of... Actually, it's very hard for me to explain. So I suggest you guys go and check the series out to see what I'm trying to say. The animation is a spectacle and it's really, really beautiful. And the story is pretty good too. The series has several differences from the book, so I won't spoil anything. So you'll have to go and check it out for yourself. So let's get to the characters. And here's the fun part. Even though the Count of Monte Cristo is the main character in the books and in the movies, the Count isn't the main character. It's a kid named Albert. He's very naive and he takes a liking to the Count. And to be honest, he's not really interesting. However, the Count in this version is very, very interesting. He's diabolical, he's sinister, he's manipulative, he's tragic. I swear, he is such a badass. And every time he's on the screen, you hang on to every word he's saying. He's that good. Now, on to Romeo and Juliet. The Count of Monte Cristo had several differences from the book. Romeo and Juliet is an actual retelling. Instead of having two families going at each other, the House of Capulet is overthrown by the House of Montague, and Montague becomes the dictator of Verona. And there are flying ponies, and there are several characters from other plays that have slipped in here. It's a pretty surreal setup. Many people know this story. You've probably most likely had it in your school play production. At times it can be a little bit slow and, and have huge, huge coincidences. But as a whole, it's a very, very enjoyable series. The animation has that sort of Disney-esque feel to it. It has its own charm to it. I also like the young love that Romeo and Juliet has in this. It's just so damn cute. Juliet takes the role of the hero and Romeo likes ponies. <laughs> I wonder if he likes My Little Pony. The story is good and the characters are likeable, but my favourite thing in this series is the dialect. And I don't mean the voice actors do a good job of the voice acting, which they do. Their dialect is Shakespearean. In most animes, when they get an English dub, they always have that uh, all American speak. But in Romeo and Juliet, they actually give, they give the characters actual Shakespearean dialect. And let me tell you something, the Shakespearean dialect is perfect for this series. I've watched both of these series multiple times and I'll continue watching them again in the future. They're not perfect, but I enjoy them. So let's continue with the countdown. Number seven. Trigon. I absolutely adore this series. I think I might have seen it about 20 times already. It's funny. It's energetic. The journey's fun. The characters are lovable as hell. The stories are good. It's just an all-around fun, good series. And to be honest, I don't think there's anything wrong with this series. Well, if I had to be nitpicky, I would say 
that the one thing I think I might be a little bit disappointed in is the the gunhole guns. One of the villains, well not one of the villains, the gang that's after Vash, their roles in the anime is serviceable. I mean, their roles in the anime isn't bad in the slightest. However, I think the Gunno guns in the manga are more threatening. And if Trigon was to get a, a reboot or a remake and it followed the manga page for page, I would definitely watch it with these guys. I just want to let you guys know that this series came out in 1998, which is years, years old. And I know what some of you are thinking. I bet the animation isn't all that good. That the animation has aged as hell. Well, that's one of the charms to Trigon. Even though it has aged, Trigon is a Western anime. And I don't mean like, oh, it's a, an anime for Westerners. I mean, it actually takes place in the actual Wild Wild West. Well, I don't mean the actual West. More like it has a sort of Wild West setting to it. And if any of you have ever seen any of those old Western movies, you've probably seen how grainy it is, the picture old-fashioned. If you were to take an old cowboy movie and watch it alongside Trigon, you would see how similar they are. So yes, Trigon has aged, but it's aged like a fine wine. If you haven't seen Trigon, then I highly recommend you go and watch it. And Vash is probably the most lovable character in the entire series. Some people might actually find him annoying, but for me, I absolutely adore him. I can't tell you guys much about him, you're just gonna have to go and watch it for yourselves. Trigon has its goofy moments, it has its serious moments, but I think the entire thing is really mellow. I've seen it 20 times, and I'll gladly watch it another 20 times. Number 6. Igoroshi, aka When They Cry. This series is possibly my favourite horror anime ever, Ever. In fact, if I was to say anything about the plot, I would most likely ruin it for those who haven't seen it. So I'll just keep it as simple as I can. A village called Hinamizawa. I can't pronounce that. A lot of mysterious goings on have been happening in this village for a long, long time. And it's assumed that the mysterious goings on is blamed on, on a god who has cursed the village. And if I was to go any further, I think I would ruin the entire anime. At first glance, in the first few episodes, the series looks like an old otaku-ish series. It actually makes you think twice on what's going on. It looks all sweet and innocent at first, but as the series goes on, it just gets dark. And it gets pretty damn scary. And it also makes you feel very uncomfortable at times. But that's what I like about this series. It's not afraid to take you into those uncomfortable situations. The mystery is absolutely fan freaking tastic. The settings, unbelievable. The music, brilliant. There are two seasons to this series. My favourite season is the first season because we don't know what the hell is going on. And the second season wraps it all up in a nice little bow, explaining the mysteries, what started all this. Even though the second season is good, I really wanted this series to keep going on and on and on, and keep us gagging for more and more. I just didn't want it, the mystery to be solved. That's how good it is. The LVAs and the specials are good too. One of the LVAs has a mystery of a car crash, and the other one is a redo. If you watch the entire series, it'll all make sense. Even though the animation isn't at top notch, like Trigon, I think it actually complements the series. And I haven't been able to find another horror anime like Igarashi or When They Cry with such good mystery, good horror, great music. It's an all around fantastic series. Some people might say that another, yes, another, that's the name of the anime, is similar to Igarashi. I have to admit the first half of another is pretty damn good, but the second half isn't all that good. But to me, Igarashi is just perfect. It's definitely number one of horror anime. So again, I highly recommend this series if you haven't seen it already. So on to the next one. Number five. Moribito, Guardian of the Spirit. I'll say this now. Mori Bito, Guardian of the Spirit, has a wonderful story to it. Which is a spear-wielding badass that comes back from a trip, and on her way home, she saves the life of the Emperor's son. The Empress is grateful to Bolsa for saving her son, so the Empress invites her to the palace as a reward for saving her son. She secretly meets up with Bolsa and asks her to protect her son from the Emperor, because he believes that his son Chango has a evil spirit in him that will bring misfortune to the kingdom. Bolsa accepts the mission, and Chango begins his new life with Bolsa. I just want to say this, the story continues after the anime is finished. There are books continuing the story of Bolsa. And to be honest, if this series was given another season or a third season, I would definitely watch it because this series, the anime series, was pretty freaking sweet. The animation's beautiful, the story's wonderful, and the relationship between Bolsa and Chugum is that of a mother and son. 
they continue their lives together, and Bolsa has to solve the mystery of what this spirit is inside Chogum. Another thing I'd like to point out is that this series doesn't have any in-your-face fan service or any cliches that we see in other anime. It's just its own story, and it's absolutely fantastic. And I really, really wish that there was a second and third season. And sadly, the books haven't been translated into English. But the anime on its own really stands up as its own thing. And I say that this is a very underrated anime series. So, let's move on. Number 4. Fate Zero. To start off, I just want to say that Fate Zero is a prequel to Fate Stay Night. And I'm just going to be 100% honest, Fate Stay Night isn't as good as Fate Zero. Fate Stay Night has all the tropes that we've seen before. In other anime, a kid meets a girl that has magical powers, he gains powers, they're in school, he has an Aram. When I first saw Fate Stay Night, I thought it was a pretty damn decent series, but Fate Zero just blows out the water completely. The animation looks absolutely 100% beautiful and yes i have been saying that a lot about the other series but the animation looks like it added budget of a million dollars or something maybe even 20 million there's a mixture of cgi and a mixture of animation and it just looks absolutely gorgeous i mean really really gorgeous it's very well detailed and i just love how the lighting hits things the character designs looks awesome and let's not forget about the music oh my god the music is absolutely epic especially my favorite part where Ryder shows his noble phantasm and his theme is army of the king and let me tell you something you could put it shit, put it to anything and it would suit it just fine like in lord of the rings or braveheart anything that has an army with it so what's the story it's about several mages that summons servants to battle for the right to wish on the holy grail and there are classes of assassin rider saber lancer caster berserker archer and each one of them is assigned to a master and each of the masters has their own problems that they have to overcome and one of the characters is named karitsugu and let me tell you something this guy is like lelouch except a million billion trillion times better and a better character. He's basically what Lelouch should have been. Besides from the animation and besides from all the fights, I think one of the highlights of this series is the battle of ideals, where one character's ideals clash with another character's ideals, especially with Saber and Karitsugu's ideals. But if I had to choose a favourite character, it would definitely, definitely, definitely be Ryder. He is just awesome. I love how charismatic he is. He's brash and loud, but he's very noble and humble and has a very good heart and is always ready and willing to hear people out or offer people to join him. As a standalone series of just being Fate Zero, it's just a masterpiece, an absolute masterpiece. And if you used to watch Fate Zero and then Fate Stay Night, damn, it's been downgraded, hasn't it? So I definitely give this series an 11 out of 10. So, onward to the next one. Number 3. Topa Tempa Gurren Lagon. This series takes everything over the top, and I mean really over the top. The series starts with a kid named Simone, which is a digger. He and his friend Komuna finds these giant robots, and they fight these other giant robots known as Beastmen. Well, more like the Beastmen are actually inside the other giant robots. And Kamina and Simone goes on a journey and gathers allies along the way to defeat the Beastmen and the Spiral King, which has enslaved humanity and forced them underground. And I'm just going to stop right there explaining the plot, because if I was to go any further, I would ruin the surprise. Like I said, this series takes things over the top, and I mean really over the top. The series just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And at the same time, it's very manly, especially Kamina. And I think Kamina is a favourite to loads of anime fans. He's actually the driving force of the series. And those who follow him, sees him as an admiration. The music's epic, the animation's cartoonish, but at the same time, manlyish. And there's been a lot of people out there who has been comparing this series to Kill a Kill. The animation style to both Gurren Lagann and Kill a Kill is similar. In fact, most of the main creators, animators of Gurren Lagann are actually the same guys who created Kill the Kill. But if you have to twist my arm and say, oh, which one do you think is better, Kill the Kill or Gurren Lagann? I'm definitely going to say Gurren Lagann, simply because, to me, I think it's more epic and it's bigger than Kill a Kill. And funnily enough, Gurren Lagann is a giant mecha robot series, and Kill a Kill 
is a magical girl series, funnily enough. But again, to me, Gone La Gone is better than Kill a Kill, simply because of how big it gets. The animation's awesome, the action's awesome, the music's awesome, the story's simple, but again, awesome, and is one of few giant robot anime that I like. And if you haven't watched it, please go and see it. So, on to the next one. Number two. Oh damn, you guys are so gonna hate me what I'm about to say. Okay, here we go. 2003, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know what you guys are gonna say. Wait, what about Brotherhood? What about Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? That's good, that's a fantastic series, it's much better than 2003. Okay, to start off with, I'm not denying that Brotherhood is a fantastic series. In fact, Brotherhood is a brilliant series. Don't get me wrong, it is. But, I do have one teeny weeny problem with the Brotherhood series. And that problem is, everything seems to fall into place perfectly. Like, when a character's revelation comes out of nowhere, like, oh, I really wanted friends, or, oh, my parents wouldn't want this, or, oh, let's all work together as a team. Everything in Brotherhood always seems to go the hero's way. But in... Full Metal Alchemist 2003, there's a lot more sense of dread and despair. The 2003 Full Metal Alchemist had a much more serious tone to it, whereas Brotherhood had a much more cartoony feel to it. I'm not saying that's bad or anything, but for me, I like seriousness in my stories, and 2003 hits the nostalgic button for me. Full Metal Alchemist 2003 doesn't follow the manga all the way, but you could think of 2003 as an alternate dimension. The story begins with two brothers on a hunt trying to find the Philosopher's Stone so they can put their bodies back together. The younger brother, Al, has his soul trapped in an armoured suit and Ed lost his arm and leg and they both have a power known as alchemy and they can shape anything with this power into whatever they want and on their journey they have to try and find the Philosopher's Stone. In this version it's a lot more serious and it gets really, really dark. And the sad moments genuinely feel really, really upsetting. I know there are people out there that likes the Brotherhood version, but for me, I like the 2003 version. But again, I'm not saying that Brotherhood is bad. I'm just saying I'd prefer 2003 over Brotherhood. As for the animation, I think it's aged pretty well. And the music's pretty decent. And the characters are absolutely wonderful. There's a few scenes that I thought was better than Brotherhood. Guys, I'm going to go into spoiler mode. If you haven't seen this series, stop this video and go and watch that first. And then come back uh, hear me talk about this. Alright, here we go. In the 2003 version, Winry finds out who killed her parents. And as it turns out, it was actually Roy Mustang that killed Winry's parents. And when Winry found out, she was angry and upset. Winry was actually planning on killing Roy Mustang. And when she got to May Yuse's home, she finds out that May's Yu's died. And May's wife tells Winry that he was always trying to help Mustang get to the top and that they were the best of friends. And this leaves Winry conflicted and confused and she breaks down crying. But in Brotherhood, again, I'm going into spoilers here, guys. It was actually Scar who killed Winry's parents and they were the ones who were helping him and his people. And when she finds out that Scar was the one who killed her parents, she grabs a gun, points it at him, and was going to shoot him. And Ed and Al was trying to convince her not to do it. But before she could do it, he got away. And then their next meeting, Scar gets caught, and Winry and Scar meets up again. And instead of killing Scar, she actually helps him. And the reason for this is because she said that her parents were doctors and they wanted to help people and she goes on to say they wouldn't want her to kill other people but instead help others and this just comes out of nowhere at least with 2003 Winry was conflicted and she saw that Roy Mustang was a good man and he had good friends and for me I think this is actually more powerful than the Brotherhood version and there are plenty of other scenes in 2003 that was better than Brotherhood, in my opinion. It was more tragic, the action was good, the characters are lovable. For me, I just love 2003 the best. So, on to the next one. Number one, Giant Robo. There's a lot of people out there that don't know what this series is about. And to be honest, it's a shame because I think this series, Giant Robo, is a very underrated series. Just by looking at the case, you're thinking, oh, let me guess, this is going to be one of those old animes that's going to be something like Astro Boy. And it's going to be about a kid who controls a giant robot fighting other monsters. There'll be one giant robot fight at the end of each episode 
and the boy wins. Well, let me tell you something. Don't judge a book by its cover because this series is that book. You should not judge things just by first glance. To start off with, the animation has aged, but it has a lot of personality. The characters are memorable, especially Ginray, but the big thing for me is the story and the mystery. Good God is this series underrated. If I was to tell you guys what went on in this series, I would definitely spoil it for you. So, take my word for it and go and watch this series. It's fan freaking tastic. You can watch this in three ways. One, the Japanese version, or two, the English version. I highly recommend the Media Blasters dub. The original English dub seems a bit too awkward to uh, watch, but that's just me. I suppose I can give you a little bit of the premise, so here we go. This organization called Big Fire is trying to, well, what else? Trying to take over the world, of course. And it's up to Daizaku and his robot, Giant Robo, to stop them. But like I said, there's more to the story than just this simple premise. There's mystery and there's really good storytelling, so please go and check it out. It's worth the watch. It's six episodes long, but they're good long six episodes. Again, it's a very, very underrated series, and I highly, highly recommend it for everyone. The story is fantastic. I just can't recommend it enough. And trust me, when I mean it's underrated, I mean it's underrated. It's a brilliant series. Please, please, please go and check it out. It's a fan-freaking-tastic series. And finally, Zero. Okay, this is the part of the list that I have decided to make for myself. Usually lists of uh, uh, 10 to 1 in a list, but the next one is going to be at 0. And the reason why this certain series is at 0 is because no matter how many years go by, this series will always be at 0, which means it stays in place, that it's always at the top. No matter how many years goes by, it will always be at the top, no matter what. Because sometimes, as time goes by, our favourites change, but this next series will always be at the top, no matter what. So you could say that this list is like a top 11, but not really. This series will always be the king of my top 10 favourite list. And 0 is... Monster. This series is my all-time favorite anime series ever, ever, ever. The story's fantastic. The the premise and settings are fantastic. The mystery is unbelievably good. The characters memorable. The journey outstanding. It's intense. The character development's great, and it's possibly got one of the greatest villains of all time in all of anime. It has no in-your-face fan service. It has none of those cliches that we see in most anime, like high school superpowers. It's a very mature anime series. So, what's the story? The story begins with a Japanese doctor named Dr. Tenma, and he's assigned to perform surgery on the city mayor. But he refuses and decides to go and perform a surgery to save a little boy's life that got shot in the head. He saves the boy's life, and this gets him into trouble with the director of the hospital. Years later, a lot of murders has been going on, and Tenma finds out that the murderer is actually the boy he helped all those years ago, and he blamed himself for those murders. And Tenma is on a journey to find this murderer and take him down. This story is completely unbelievable. The entire journey is just one big epic journey. If I was to give it a score, I would give it a 12 out of 10. It's that good, in my opinion. Hell, I'm such a big fan of this series, I've even got the manga. Trust me, it is possibly one of the greatest anime series of all time. Bar none, in my opinion. Well, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching this video. And if you guys have any uh, videos for a top 10 that you want me to do, just leave uh, some comments in the comment section below, and I'll get to that comment as soon as I can. And for my next top 10 video, I'm going to be doing the top 10 best and worst moments of screw attacks goku versus superman parts one and two those videos have the bad moments and i've also got the good moments so i thought i might give you my take on the best and the worst thank you guys for watching thank you guys for watching and if there's a series you want me to check out and review and give my thoughts on it or if there's a top 10 list you want me to do or any reactions or responses or rants on anything geeky just leave links and comments in the comment sections below and i'll get to them as soon as i can and if you guys want to follow me on my social medias i'm on minds.com vidme gab twitter 
Tumblr, Patreon, and my other social medias are down there in the description box below. So if you want to go and check them out, please do. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video. And please go and check out my new skeptic channel, Gypsy Freak. It's also down there in the description box below. Peace out.